Hello, everyone. I'm Shannon Yang for another week of Asian news from the ACTV studios in the entertainment capital of the world to your home and anywhere on your device. Visit actvus.com to enjoy live streaming of ACTV's programs, especially Asian news, anytime and anywhere in the world. You can also download the ACTV app from your smartphone, Roku, and coded devices to watch live and video on demand shows on your phone and share anything to all of your friends globally. ACTV is also available on the WCE TV app worldwide. Visit actvus.com to get the links, or simply go to Facebook and YouTube and search for Asian Culture TV. Yes, we are making it easy for you to access Asian news and other ACTV programs locally or globally. Now, let's begin with the weekly rundown on what you need to know right now that happened around us this week. Trump urges governors to dominate protesters. According to the Washington Post, President Trump on Monday told a group of state governors over the phone that they should use law enforcement to dominate protesters who are demonstrating against police brutality. After a weekend of nationwide protest, Trump urged governors to use force to take back the streets, saying they should not be weak with those who are gathering to demand justice for George Floyd and others who have faced systematic racism. Most of you are weak, he told governors, calling on them to step up police presence. You have to dominate. If you don't dominate, you are wasting your time. They are going to run over you. They are going to look like a bunch of jerks. He reportedly said, Trump has publicly called the protesters anarchists, thugs, and threatened to order the National Guard to begin shooting, sourced from the Washington Post. Independent autopsy finds George Floyd's death was homicide caused by asphyxia. An independent autopsy commissioned by George Floyd my family determined that his cause of death was homicide caused by asphyxia. Family members announced Monday. Early findings from two independent medical examiners found that Floyd died from asphyxia due to neck and back compression that led to a lack of blood flow to the brain. Video emerged last week showing Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin kneeling on Floyd's neck while he said he couldn't breathe. Chauvin has since been fired and charged with third-degree murder and manslaughter. The Hennepin County Medical Examiner's preliminary findings, meanwhile, found no physical findings that support the diagnosis of dramatic asphyxiation of strangulation last week. It also cited underlying health conditions that likely contributed to his death. But independent doctors on Monday said Floyd had no underlying medical problem that caused or contributed to his death. Sourced from the ABC News and USA Today. Obama, protesters should make specific demands for criminal justice police reform. Former President Barack Obama on Monday published a blog post titled How to Make This Moment That Turning Point for Real Change. Obama said the ongoing nationwide protest against police brutality represent a genuine and legitimate frustration over a decades-long failure to reform police practices and the broader criminal justice system. He condemned the small minority of folks who have resorted to violence and also called for voters to get involved in both national, state, and local elections. If we want to bring about real change, then the choice isn't between protest and politics, he wrote. We have to do both. Obama said protesters should organize to identify specific demands for criminal justice and police reform to avoid mere lip service in response to demonstrations, sourced from the medium. Officials warn demonstrations could result in coronavirus spike. Public officials across the country on Sunday warned that mass protests over police violence against African Americans could result in a spike in coronavirus infection. The protests in at least 75 cities have brought large crowds together, often shoulder to shoulder. 
Maryland Governor Larry Hogan warned that thousands of people jammed in together in close proximity could easily spread the virus. Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms expressed the same concern. I'm extremely concerned we are seeing mass gatherings, she told CNN. We're going to see the other side of this in a couple of weeks. As states gradually reopen their several damaged economies, the number of infections nationwide has risen to nearly 1.8 million, with more than 104,000 deaths, sourced from the New York Times and CNN. Coronavirus could cost the U.S. $16 trillion in economic growth this decade. The Congressional Budget Office on Monday reported that it has altered its economic growth predictions for the next decade in response to the coronavirus pandemic effect on the economy. If trends continue, the estimate for the level of nominal GDP in the second quarter of 2020 is now 14.2 percent lower than it was in January. Things improved slightly after that. The difference in the January and May estimate is 9.4% for the end of 2020 and 2.2% by the end of 2030. But the cumulative nominal economic output over the next decade is nearly $15.7 trillion less than the agency had pegged in January, adjusted for inflation. That figure comes in at $7.9 trillion. Top Democrats said the report showed a need for additional legislation to stimulate the economy. Sourced from the Fox News. NASA astronauts Bob Hengen and Doug Hurley are now safely aboard the International Space Station after historic launch of the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule aboard a Falcon 9 rocket on May the 30th, 2020. The launch marks the first time that a commercial company has launched astronauts in space. It also ends a nine-year gap since the final flight of the space shuttle in which astronauts have not flown to space from U.S. soil. Speaking during a press conference on Monday morning, Benkin said that the first stage of their ascent was smoother than they had experienced on shuttle mission, but described the second stage as a little rougher. However, Benkin noted that both he and Hurley was expecting that we were both commenting on it as we were going uphill, he explained. Hurley also described their capsules docking with the International Space Station. We didn't feel the docking, it's so smooth. And we docked, he said. On shuttle, we felt the docking. Benkin and Hurley made the journey in new specific designed SpaceX spacesuits that replace the bulkier spacesuits of earlier missions. For both Doug and I, we would have to give the suit a five-star rating, Benkin added. On their arrival at the ISS, the astronauts were warmly welcomed by fellow NASA astronauts Chris Cassidy, commander of the space station's Expedition 63, and Russian cosmonauts Anatoly and Ivan Wagner. The duration of their stay on the space station is yet to be determined. In less than a week after sending humans to space for the first time, Elon Musk's company has another routine launch ready to go. Elon Musk's pioneering rocket business hopes to launch its next Starlink satellite mission on Wednesday, June the 3rd, 2020, which is called Falcon 9 Block 5. The Kennedy Space Center announced that blast-off is set for 8.55 p.m. Eastern Time from Cap Carnival with a backup launch window 24 hours later. The Falcon 9, carrying the satellites, will attempt a landing at sea, and the company will also try to recover both halves of the nose, comb, and fairing, which is beginning to become a routine part of each mission. The mission was previously scheduled for mid-May, but was scrubbed by Tropical Storm Arthur. This would be the eighth launch of a batch of 60 Starlink broadband satellites, bringing the total in orbit to nearly 500. The company hopes to send hundreds more of its orbiting routers up by the end of the year, with an ultimate goal of tens of thousands in low Earth orbit to provide high-speed internet to almost anywhere on the planet.
The project has been controversial among scientists and astronomers who worry about the brightness of the satellites, which have already interfered with telescopic observations of the cosmos. The mission, which is labeled Starlink 7, will carry SpaceX's latest attempt at a fix in the form of a sunshade called VisorSat that reduces the reflectivity of each satellite equipped with one. The company is expected to test at least one VisorSat in this batch and move towards all future satellites in the fleet being VisorSats. Has your iPhone screen been damaged by accident? Bring it here at iPhone Doctor! Or has it been damaged by water? Bring it here at iPhone Doctor! We're located at 751 North Rancho Drive, 702-553-2800. We also repair iPods and iPads. iPhone Doctor! We have services with connection plan, sales and cellular ac- To Beijing Associated Press, Hong Kong stock market surged more than 3% and other Asian markets rebounded Monday after President Donald Trump avoided reigniting a trade war with China amid tension over Hong Kong and the coronavirus pandemic. Shanghai's market benchmark gained more than 2% and Tokyo was up nearly 1%. Global markets sank Friday as investors waited for Trump's response to Beijing's security law on Hong Kong. In the end, Trump ended Hong Kong's special trade status and suspended visas of some Chinese students, but avoided pulling out of trade in a trust war with Beijing that weighs on global growth. Markets may draw hollow consolation that the U.S. is treading carefully, said Mizu Home Bank in the report. However, it warned relief may be set to evaporate. Hong Kong's Hansen Index jumped 3.4%, the Shanghai Composite Index rose 2.1%, and the Nikkei 225 in Tokyo rose 0.8%. The Kospi in Seoul added 1.7%, and Australia's S&P ASX 200 was 0.9% higher. India's Sensex opened up 3%, Singapore gained 2.1%, and Bangkok rose 1%. Meanwhile, a monthly gauge of Chinese manufacturing issued by a business magazine, Sai Qing, edged up to a four-month high, but new export orders fell from an already low level in the sign of weak global demand. Also Monday, South Korea reported exports fell 23.7% in May from a year earlier. U.S.-Chinese tension has weighed on investor optimism about the global economy's recovery from its deepest slump since the 1930s. As China and some European countries revive economic activity, stock markets have been regaining much of its year's loss despite rising numbers of virus cases in the United States, Brazil, and some other countries. On Friday, Wall Street's bank mark S&P 500 index ended this week with a 3% gain following a late afternoon rally boosted by Trump's new conference. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 0.1%. The Nasdaq Composite, which is heavily weighed with technology stocks, climbed 1.3%. Before the virus outbreak, the global economy already was under pressure from the U.S.-Chinese dispute over Beijing's technology ambitions and trade surplus. The world's two biggest traders had raised tariffs on billions of dollars of each other's goods. They signed a trace in January, but Trump has added to market jitters by threatening to pull out if China doesn't buy more American goods. 
On Friday, Trump said Washington would begin eliminating agreements that gave Hong Kong privileges that China lacked, including exemption from some import controls. That followed a ceremonial Chinese legislator's endorsement of a security law for Hong Kong that pro-democracy advocates say undermines the autonomy promised to the former British colony. It is unclear how the decision might affect U.S. companies in Hong Kong and the territory status as a finance and business center. But the business groups say the uncertainty over its status might hurt its attractiveness to foreign investors. The energy market benchmark U.S. crude lost 30 cents per barrel in electronic trading on the New York Mercantile Exchange. The contract gained $1.78 on Friday to settle at $35.49. The contract gained $1.78 on Friday to settle at $35.49. Brent crude used to price international oils shed 29 cents to $37.55 per barrel in London. The Strip reopens this week following an unprecedented two and a half months shutdown to slow the spreading coronavirus pandemic, remaining on the sidelines. However, are the arenas, showrooms, and convention space utilized for non-gaming attractions that have become part of its financial lifeblood and attracted so many tourists last year? Mass gathering events are not included in phase two of the state's reopening plan, primarily because of social distancing protocols suggested by the Center of Disease Control and Prevention and other health and safety organizations. Las Vegas resorts have grown less dependent on gaming revenues over the past two decades and have focused millions of dollars toward expanding non-gaming aspects of the tourism industry, including a wide variety of entertainment choices, scores of restaurant options, a multitude of retail attractions, and many high-profile special events. Marketing expert Josh Swissman, a founding partner in the strategy organization, said Las Vegas needs to get back to the basics. A major piece of the overall Vegas experience is not going to be there right away, but it won't be gone forever, Swissman said. One thing Vegas does best is service, and that's what we're going to have to deliver. There are now 43 states with commercial and tribal casinos. A person doesn't have to drive far to play a slot machine or find a seat at blackjack table. The fact has changed Las Vegas' focus. In the Nevada Gaming Control Board's most recent gaming industry abstract, 44 strip casino reports produced more than $18.7 billion in revenues for the 2019 physical year. Gaming accounted for 34.5%, or $6.45 billion, while hotel rooms, dining, and entertainment made up to 65.5%, a spread that hasn't varied in the last five years. The growth of non-gaming amenities, analysts said, allowed Las Vegas to prosper when faced with increased casino competition for neighboring states, such as California where tribal casinos produced an estimated $9 billion in gaming revenues annually before the pandemic. Non-gaming spending didn't even top $1 billion at California Indian casinos, according to economist Alan Meester's most recent Indian gaming industry report. This has been a solid strategy to broaden the city's revenue base and smooth out its tourism calendar, said Nami E. Abouzid, president of consulting firm Launch Vegas, who spent 13 years in marketing roles with Wynn Resorts, Las Vegas Sands, and the Golden Knights. Surveys consistently cite entertainment as a top driver of new Vegas visits, Abouzid said. We need it since 80% of Vegas visitors are repeat visitors. We constantly need new products. Live entertainment also drives casino play and fills restaurants at resorts. Abouzid cited sports tourism as the most recent phenomenon that has shown success with the Golden Knights. The Knights' home T-Mobile Arena cost MGM Resorts International and AEG $365 million to build in 2016 and is also used for concerts and college basketball tournaments.
The $2 billion Allegiant Stadium, home of the relocated Las Vegas Raiders, will also host nine conference college football games. A Garth Brooks concert was announced earlier this year, pre-COVID-19 for August. However, the biggest concern is the notion of people packing an 18,000-seat arena or 65,000-seat stadium while COVID-19 spread is still greatly unknown. The investment will not be lost, just interrupted temporarily, Abozit said. Ultimately, Vegas will pivot to prosperity, as it has done so many times in the past. Less than half of the Strip's major resorts have announced reopening plans beginning Thursday under state-mandated health and safety protocols that hold a facility's capacity to 50 percent while increasing space between active slot machines and reducing the number of seats at table gamings. Casino operators are promulgating social distancing guidelines and cleaning and disinfecting efforts. MGM Resorts and Caesars Entertainment are reopening six of their combined 18 strip casinos. Caesars will also bring back the high roller observation wheel. Showrooms are still dark and restaurant options are limited, with dining attractions having decreased seating. Caesars Palace, for example, is reopening just two of full-service restaurants Thursday, along with several grab-and-go type offerings. John Restrepo, principal of Las Vegas-based RCG Economics, said there are many unknowns as the Strip moves into the recovery phase. He said resort operators have to base their plans on hot, heavy mass gatherings, large entertainment venues available for several months. For now, nightclubs and concerts won't be a reason to visit Las Vegas. Restrepo also said the divide between gaming and non-gaming revenues will also have to narrow somewhat until the major events return. The question is how much gaming contributes to the bottom line at a time when unemployment is running at 44% nationwide. We don't know what it means to operate in 50% capacity, Restrepo said. Many restaurant operators say it's challenging to make a profit at 75% capacity. There are a lot of unknowns. We don't know when mass gatherings meetings are going to come back, what businesses lost because of new technology such as Zoom meetings. UNLV professor and gaming historian David Schwartz predicted the pandemic will change the atmosphere inside Las Vegas casinos. He said security inside resorts become more heightened after the September 11th, 2001 terrorist attacks and the recession changed Las Vegas, somewhat from being a value-oriented destination. MGM Resorts and Caesars have announced they're eliminating paid parking fees, and Schwartz hopes the casino operators can get together and eliminate or greatly reduce resort fees attached to hotel room bills. An immediate impact could be cashless gaming initiatives, such as mobile wallets connected to player loyalty cards and electronic table games. We were heading in that direction the coronavirus has now deemed to quicken that effort, Schwartz said. We will see a push toward innovation. Swissman said a focus on the casino to enhance the gaming experience, safety, will be the overall initial effort. He also believes cashless gaming technology will become common more quickly than what had been originally anticipated. Automation seen in other areas of a property will soon find its way into the casino. Parts of the Vegas gaming experience will forever change, Swissman said. As a people, and a culture. We need to get back to the place where we are comfortable. Swissman expects strip properties will see a fair amount of business this week. He and Schwartz said a good sign was the promotion by downtown casino owner Derek Stevens. He gave away 1,000 one-way airline tickets to Vegas, good for this weekend, with no strings attached other than the person that responsible for their return flights and hotel rooms. Two hours after selling out the promotion, Stevens gave away another 1,000 airline flights. That's the attitude you want in Vegas, Schwartz said, the casino owner with the image that he doesn't care about money. His customer will come in with the same attitude and will spend more. 
Strip gaming revenues fell from $481.6 million to $3.39 million in April, a decline of 99.6%. McCarran International Airport saw a 96.4% decline in passenger volume during the months. Similar drops are expected when May's totals are released. Restrepo said airline capacity will be a foremost element in any Las Vegas recovery. And it was announced last week that Las Vegas is being considered as a location by the National Hockey League for an abbreviated playoff format. But it's unclear whether fans would be allowed into T-Mobile Arena for the games. MGM Resort acting CEO Bill Hornbuckle said last month that Cancelled conventions and meetings at the company strip properties originally planned for the spring have rebooked for the fall and winter and into 2021. As for strip entertainment, showrooms will continue to remain dark. The trouble extends beyond Las Vegas. Circus de Soleil, the Montreal-based entertainment company with six different shows at MGM properties, needed a $200 million cash infusion from the Quebec government last week to help manage its losses. Another ominous sign was the Smith Center's decision last week to postpone its Broadway Las Vegas series through the fall. Abouzid said the short-term concern was how long it will take Las Vegas to bounce back under the safety protocols and distancing measures, but he's optimistic that the resort corridor will revolve. What that ensembles remains the end answered question. Vegas will be a leader in whatever the new normal is, he said. The standard setter is cleanliness, preparedness, and fun at scale. Has your iPhone screen been damaged by accident? Bring it here at iPhone Doctor! Or has it been damaged by water? Bring it here at iPhone Doctor! We're located at 751 North Rancho Drive, 702-553-2800. We also repair iPods and iPads. iPhone Doctor! We have services with connection plan, sales and cellular activation. The best place to have your iPhone like brand new. iPhone Doctor! 702-553-2800. Now coming to the Vegas restaurant scene, Caesars Entertainment already has an opening date for a third resort on the Las Vegas Strip. Previously, the gaming giant announced plans for Caesars Palace and Flamingo Las Vegas on June 4th, when casinos are allowed to reopen in Las Vegas. Now the company plans to open Harris on Friday, June the 5th at 11 a.m. Caesars Palace, Flamingo Las Vegas, and some restaurants and shops at the Link Promenade open on June the 4th at 10 a.m. And the High Roller Observation Wheel starts accepting passengers at noon. Harris Las Vegas went through a 200 million multi-year resort renovation with refreshed rooms and remodeled casinos floor and hotel lobby. Cake Boss Buddy, Velastro's new restaurant Pizza Cake, and recently remodeled Juice Chris Steakhouse. Caesars Palace also announced some of the restaurants it plans to reopen. Gordon Ramsay's House Kitchen will serve dinner only. Other restaurant reopening include Old Homestead Steakhouse, Cafe Americano, and Di Farah Pizza in the food court. Vendor Pumps Cocktail Garden, Vista Cocktail Lounge, Venice Pool, Spanish Steps Bar, Lobby Bar, Monte Cristo Cigar Bar and Starbucks also reopened. The neighboring forum shops at Caesars also reopened on Friday. The Palms already announced plans to reopen its dining room for service. At the Flamingo, X-Bar, Bugsy's Bar, Pizza To Go, 
beach club, resort pool, and go pool reopens too. Caesars plans to reopen its other Las Vegas properties, the gaming floor at the link, Bally's Las Vegas, the Cromwell, Paris Las Vegas, Planet Hollywood Resort, and the Rio, and dining amenities based on customer demands. Asian News the anchor programs of ACTV reaches out to all the Asian nations represented in our community, that they be part of our culture and social revolution. Please email us at community at actvlv.com or call 702-979-1388 for more information. Don't go away. Asian News will be right back. The best entertainment. The widest coverage. The fastest speed. Only through Asian Networks. Call now for huge standalone and bundle savings at 702-344-0156. Hello everyone, I am your host Santana Foster with Thailand TV for Asian News. A Thailand supermarket is using banana leaves instead of plastic products packaging. Fresh produce with side of plastic packaging has become the norm in grocery stores around the world over the past few decades, but likely Many shops and brands are fighting that by innovating new ways to combat unnecessary plastic use. Most recently, a grocery store ch chain called Rimping, located in Chiang Mai, Thailand, has started using discard banana leaf instead of plastic wrap to secure loose produce and the creative packaging has taken to the internet by storm. The grocery store innovation recently went viral when Chiang Mai based real estate company and the local chair photos of the cucumbers, lettuce, green beans, chili peppers, and more wrapped in a rimping banana leaf packaging on Facebook. To secure the leaves in place, Rimping used bamboo twist tie, which are also biodegradable. As banana grow year-round in Thailand, and the large sturdy waxy leaves are byproduct of the banana industry because the leaves are often simply discarded. There is not a huge demand on them. And the only cost associated with using banana leaf as a product's packaging would be cost of gathering them. That said, using banana leaf to protect the food is not new in Asian cultures. According to the traditional dishes from Thailand, India, China, Vietnam, and Malaysia, have all employed banana leaves to plates and wrap fried foods. Rimping, which was first found in 1932, is not ordinary stop shop. According to its website, Rimping is green grocer that operates six supermarkets and two smaller grocery shops across Thailand. In addition to banana leaves package, Limping offers a slew of other 
suitable packaging options. For example, customers who forget to bring reusable tarts can borrow Rimping cloth bags for a deposit. Rimping offer biodegradable bioplastic carrier bags as well as reusable cardboard boxes to pack groceries. A 50 Thai baht with $1.57 US dollars donation is made for every customer who does not take a bag and Rimping only use biodegradable containers for dining. Thank you for watching Thai MTV for Asian News. Please download our apps at actvus.com for update Asian News. Again, I am your host Santana Foster. Sawadika. See you again next time. This is Jenny Lee Yalang from Vietnam TV on Asian News. This week I am proud to report the new release of Paycheck Protection Program Loan Forgiveness Application. Today, the U.S. Small Business Administration, in consultation with the U.S. Department of the Treasury, released by the Paycheck Protection Program PPP Loan Forgiveness Application and detailed instruction for the application. The form and instruction inform borrowers how to apply for forgiveness of their PP loans consistent with the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, CARES Act. SBA will also soon issue regulations and guidance to further assist borrowers as they complete their applications and to provide lenders with guidance on their responsibilities. The form and instructions include several measures to reduce compliance burdens and simplify the process for borrowers, including options for borrowers to calculate payroll costs use an alternative payroll cover period that aligns with borrowers' regular payroll cycles. Flexibility to include eligible payroll and non-payroll expenses paid or incurred during the eight weeks period after receiving their PPP loans. Step-by-step -step instructions on how to perform the calculations required by the CARES Act to confirm eligibility for loan forgiveness. Borrower-friendly implementation of statutory exemptions from loan forgiveness reduction based on rehiring by June 30. Addition of new exemption of the loan forgiveness reduction for borrowers who have made a good faith written offer to rehire workers that was declined. The PPP was created by the CARES Act to provide forgivable loans to eligible small businesses to keep American workers on the payroll during the COVID-19 pandemic. The documents released today will help small businesses seek forgiveness at the conclusion of the eight-week cover period, which begins with disbursement of their loans. Good morning. This is Jenny Lee Yalan for Vietnam TV. Today is a great day for our Memorial Weekend celebration at Leona Cafe with the communities here in Las Vegas. Hello, this is Jenny Lee Yalan. I'm the host for the Vietnam TV Asian News. This afternoon it's my pleasure to meet April Becker, attorney for Las Vegas, Nevada here, who is running for the state senate this November. My pleasure in meeting with you. Thank you for giving me a little time here to interview, interview you on Vietnam TV. So let me know uh, in the audience, April, uh, you are running for the state senate this November. Tell me, if you were to be voted to be the state senate for this November, what can you do for the AAPI, which is the American Asian Pacific Island Community? I want to find out what's not being done for you already, and I want to get to know your community better, and I want to find out what I can do as senator to help the AAPI. 
Awesome, that's a great answer, and it is my pleasure to represent the Vietnamese community on HME Center. I welcome you Thank to you. the running of the State Senate, and I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you. And I am sure that April Becker will be a great State Senate for us here, especially for the AAPI community. This is Jenny Lin Yalang at your service. Thank you for watching Vietnam TV on Asian News. If you have any events you wish to share with our local and global audience, please contact our producer Pam Fang at 702-461-4263. I am Jenny Lin Yalang at your service. Lin Yalang xin kính chào quý vị. Don't go away. Asian News will be right back. For thousands of years, our ancestors have treated diseases and sicknesses by natural means using plant and earth materials like herbs and trees. In just 100 years, mankind has developed amazing scientific advancements that allow us to enjoy a better life. However, without proper balance, a poor diet, and lack of exercise, our health can deteriorate. Inflammation in the body becomes our worst enemy when it comes to maintaining a healthy lifestyle. So how do we prevent our health from declining? Natural Medicine. A trusted name in the field of natural medicine is Herbax. For over 20 years, Herbax has been producing and distributing natural supplements. Herbax has developed unique patented formulas, duly FDA registered, that achieve optimal health results and help our body regenerate back to its normal functions. We invite you to look at Herbax to adopt new, healthier habits and live a natural lifestyle. Go to HerbaxUSA.com now. The best entertainment The widest coverage, the fastest speed, only through Asian Networks. Call now for huge standalone and bundle savings at 702-344-0156. News. ACTV, the new mainstream network, is expanding its current mainstream programming. While ACTV carries a natural viewership base of Asian Americans and global Asians, ACTV is headquartered in Las Vegas, the entertainment capital of the world, which is a global brand, undeniably. There has been a growing interest from mainstream viewers, content providers, sponsors, and advertisers who understand how big the Asian population is locally and globally. ACTV produces and assembles TV programs weekly, including Asian news in English and Chinese versions, original Asian and mainstream content. To learn more about these programs and have a sneak preview of all upcoming programs, visit actvus.com. And if you wish to become a proud sponsor of any of the programs or simply want to advertise your business in the channel, please call 702-979-1388. Stay safe and keep bettering yourself during the craziness. It's hard to beat the convenience of reading all across the internet, and there is a lot of useful information there, but there is also a lot of misinformation. Just as the number of people and countries affected by this new virus have spread, so have conspiracy theories and unfounded claims about it, especially when it comes to the messages on social media sites. It's best to listen to experts who use well-accepted scientific analysis and publish your results in reputable medical journals. Outlets like CDC and the WHO, which recently added a MythBuster page to its information on the virus. Medline Plus from the U.S. National Library of Medicine, the U.K.'s National Health Service, and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Major news outlets with deep expertise in health reporting and reputable TV news, just like us. What are you waiting for? I'm Shannon Yang. Till next time. <laughs>